Are you looking to broaden your career opportunities? Future-proof your career with a bachelor's degree from the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. We've introduced new cutting-edge degree programs in Environmental Studies and Sustainability, Tourism and Hospitality, Business Administration and Public Health. Online platforms are making it easier than ever before to further your education and mask your competitive advantage. This is the game changer you've been waiting for. Get the highest return on your investment in UECS from the college you trust. Visit salcc.edu.lc. Apply today for September 2021. Hello everyone and welcome to SALCC Updates where we bring you reports on our news and events. My name is Natalie Julie Fanas and it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you again this week as we continue our series for the rest of the calendar year and the academic year for the college in giving you information that is pertinent to your growth and development. You can join us here every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. with repeats later in the week, just in case you want to tell someone else who has missed our episode. So we began last week and I had as my guest the new registrar of the college, Mr. Ian Minville, and he made a significant announcement that we will reopen applications for our January semester, that is January 2022, for selected programs. In addition to that, we will also be offering some short courses that you can access. Usually they run between six weeks and three months. And one of those courses is a quail course, or Creole course, if you want to use the English. And that runs for a period of three months and you will get a certificate at the end of that time. And it includes all of the skills, reading, writing, and speaking in the Creole language. So you have an opportunity to visit our website at www.salcc.edu.lc to apply for our associate degree programs as well as the short courses. And you can check out our website for more information on the selected courses that are being offered. As I speak of Creole during our Creole Heritage Month, I have as my guest this afternoon, Mr. McCorville Comby, who is the coordinator of the newly formed Student Experience Unit, and we'll be speaking to him about some special activities that they have for this month, but also about his unit, because it is new to the college, but a very significant unit, I must say. So, hello, Mr. Comby, and thank you for being here with me today. Hello, thank you for having me. So, Mr. Kombi, before we, we get into our Moa Ewitage Koyola, and we have to start practicing the Koyola because, you know, we teach it. Um, just tell us a little bit more about your unit and its responsibilities. Okay. The Student Experience Unit is the result of the, a recognition by the college that it had to be more systematic, more organized, in ensuring that the, the various activities which it had for students were coordinated and therefore be able to have a better impact on those students. So essentially when the unit was created, a number of existing departments were drawn together under that unit and therefore it would help coordinate and those units those departments which were drawn together under the Students' Experience Unit would help, therefore, ensure that this experience which students have at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College is a holistic one. So, for example, under the, presently under the unit, you had the counseling unit, the counseling unit which existed already, so it is now under the student experience unit. You had the sports department, which was under another unit, which is now brought underneath there. We have brought also a, a what we call a health educator, which is now under uh, under that unit, and also the the clubs and sports groups which existed and which were under the registrar, assistant registrars, um, it is brought underneath 
the students experiencing. So these existing units, if you notice, they speak to the mental, mm -hmm. um, counseling, the physical, sports, and the educational, if you want, um, um, health and the life skills, which is the clubs. And, and, and so it brings together those units so that there can be a better coordination of those activities to ensure that the student's overall experience is, as I said, a holistic one. Great. Um, and, and as you speak to the holistic development of the students, sometimes at, at the college level, you find some students don't place as much importance on non-academic activities. Um, can you speak to why this continues to be important even at this level? Well, well, again, traditionally, traditionally, um, for the experience of not just St. Lucians, but of Caribbean people, people coming out of poverty, was that education was the way, to, is the way, or was, is the way to success. So when you went to school, your parents expected you and expect you to focus on your studies. Because when you get your, in my days, it will say something about my age, but in my days it was GCs. So nowadays it's CXCs, and it used to be A levels. Now it um it was um A levels. Now it's Cape A levels. And so when you went to school, it was all those things. So it was common entrance, and in my time when you had common entrance, you also had scholarship exam. So you had these kinds. So these were critical parts in your educational journey. Um, where you needed to succeed. Right now, for example, there are sufficient secondary schools where most people can get a place in a secondary school. Mm -hmm. In my time, there were not sufficient secondary schools. So if you fail common entrance, that was it for a number of students. Their secondary school education was done. And then later on, you got the junior secondary school. So the historical experience in St. Lucia has been that when you're talking about school, when you're talking about education, it is about the academic. And the focus has to be on that. So if, for example, when we, were, when, when we and it, was a, it continues, you would come to school, you can play football. That's nice, but that is fun thing. That is fun thing. When it's time for examination or stuff, I don't you hear you come and tell me about you have to go and play netball, or you have to go and play football, or you have to. That is a side. What is, what is happening in the development, and that's one other thing about education and educational research. It show it always, this research and the findings of the research impact how education is delivered, how we, how, what we come to understand. And one of the things which have been discovered is that the sporting activities, the, the clubs, that whether it was girl guides, brown knees, whether it was um, what were the others they had? They had the Red Cross groups Rangers. or these things. All these different things, what educational research has helped recognize is that those so-called, what we used to call extracurricular activities, those extracurricular activities will played an important role in developing life skills in students, which were even, which were just as important in terms of they are just as important as the academic um, contribution in bringing out a holistic job. So you used to have students coming out there bright, bright, bright like crazy, but they couldn't function. They couldn't function. And so over time, those activities which we are being referred to as extracurricular, we stop using the word extra and we call it co-curricular activities. And so now these co-curricular activities are seen as playing as an important role as, as your um, academic programs. And so much so that in a number of uni many, many ma a majority of the universities and colleges now, when you send in your application form, they are not just asking you about your academic qualifications. They are now asking you about your involvement. What clubs have you been in? What groups are you involved in? Because they recognize that all work and no play makes Jack and Jill a dull person. So these have become, as, as I said, the educational research has shown the importance of those 
co-curricular activities in the life of, in the development of a holistic student. And so that is why, again, as part of the unit, since we want to focus on those experience, we want to ensure that these students have these opportunities to develop those skills. That, that is an excellent explanation, and, and I really thank you for the historical context of mm. that. And I must even add your gender neutrality of, of Jack and Jill and Pussin, <laughs> and not just boys. It's, it's, it's very important these days. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Combi, the, the COVID, the pandemic, mm -hmm. has done a number of things. But I know it has also provided opportunities, and I want to focus on that a bit. So, so Arthur Lewis, in, in the first year of the pandemic, we really went full scale getting students online so that they could complete the academic program. Mm -hmm. But I know towards the end of, of that academic year that your unit um, really started to get on board with um, getting student activities. Um, can you speak to some of those activities that you have organized for students thus far? Okay. Um, I think most most St. Lucians and most persons in the world, and, if, and for those who have not recognized it, is that COVID will be with us, COVID-19 will be with us for some time. So COVID-19 would end, even with the decreasing numbers of infections, COVID-19 won't end at the end of December 31st, 2021. COVID will carry with us into 2022. So it's something we're going to leave I have to live with, um, with for a year or two again before maybe we can say go back to what we used to. So you cannot, within that, re accepting that reality, we cannot continue to just say, well, we're waiting for things. We have to find how do we operate, how do we in that environment. And one of the, the, the real things that have happened is that most persons have had to move things to an online and virtual reality. So Zoom, I think, now has become the most popular, or the most common word um, for many persons nowadays. And then you have Google Classrooms and whatever. And so as a unit, because we recognize, as I explained earlier, the importance of co-curricular activities, it now becomes how do we do co-curricular activities in that in that environment, because in many instances, we cannot bring just co-curricular activities, whether it's sports or clubs, most times will be face-to-face. -face. We cannot bring them face-to-face -face because of infection rates and stuff like that, social distancing. How do we move it to an online um, modality? And so from last year, we had, we sought to inform the students about what was available online. So we had a clubs and sports fair, which we held online, so we inf explain, um, we introduced the students to all the different clubs which we had, and we had some 14 different clubs, active clubs, where they can be, they could have joined, and they could have joined online, and the clubs then would reach out to them to have the various activities. Um, so. The individual clubs are responsible, therefore, for how they meet, how they interact. And it is not that they, can, they will not have face-to-face -face activities, but these would be limited because of the social distances and other um, COVID-19 protocols. But a number of things can be done online. So chess can be played online. I mean, people are surprised. I mean, the Zoom has a lot of different um, features now. When you just started, it was just, uh, you, have, you can have breakout rooms and variety. So the skill sets, as, to, as um, groups start utilizing the, the platform, they become more okua with the, the features of it and therefore can utilize it. And so that is what is happening. Some groups are farther ahead than others, but um, more of the groups are reaching out to their students, to their members. Persons have indicated their interest by that way. A major activity we are having this month is a talent expose. Before you go there, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm just going to interrupt you a bit. I want to stay a little bit on the club. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to the range, not to name every club, but I know there are different types of clubs um, okay. in terms All of right. the interest. Can you speak just to the range so that even parents who are listening are informed of the types of activities that the students can get involved in? Okay. We have service clubs so that these service clubs would speak about Circle K, which is the, the school's versions of Kiwanis mm -hmm. International. You have... Um, you have Red Cross, which um, Red Cross. You have um, Interact. Interact, and 
there's pay cons no that, yes. that's yeah, pay pay counseling so these are some of the service clubs clubs which essentially they 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 call their mission are really to be of service to other students and to members of the community so we have clubs in that group. We have what we call um, subject groups or program groups, groups which come out essentially of some of the programs or the courses which we teach. So for example, we have one of the oldest and, and more vibrant, vibrant clubs, uh, the Modern Languages Club, which is, um, I guess, because most times for the last, well, because of COVID, they haven't got every year, they had their tour to uh, Margarita. This um, group always had members, but the Modern Languages Club. You have the um, the environmental, the environmental club that is another one attached to the to the programs. And there was the um, there's the, uh, they have a long name entrepreneurship you know? entrepreneurship arm club. So these are the, that's uh, another um, group. And there was a third group that's not coming to my mind right now. Um, but these are these are some of the types. Then there are there are what we call um, if you want um, interest groups. Mm -hmm. So you, for example, have the debating club. Um, you have the arts persons interested in arts. There's an astronomy an astronomy um, um, group. So these are groups where people have particular interests. You have media. the you have my plug. media. You have media. You have the the Christian Fellowship Group. So there's a whole range there. Now, in there, sometimes we have groups. One of the things about those groups is that sometimes you have students who come in in a, in a given year. You have students who are passionate about it. So for the two years there, while they there, that group is thriving, thriving, thriving. When they graduate, you don't get maybe persons coming up with that, so it lulls. So there, there are ebbs and flows in some of those groups, particularly the interest, the interest groups. So these are the, the, the categories, program, interest, and service, and service, and service clubs. Just before we go to break, can you tell us a little bit about um, the structure of those clubs? Are they um, staff run? Are they more student driven? Okay. Um, what is the function? How, how do they function? Well, keep in mind, as I spoke earlier, co-curricular activities, one of the key things about it is they develop life skills for the students. So most of those clubs, when they are formed, they're supposed to be student-driven. So they mo each of these clubs, they would have, they would elect the executive, which will essentially be primarily responsible for calling meetings, hosting meetings, and planning. But all the clubs have what we call a, a, a faculty advisor or faculty liaison officer who is um, interested in that area. And sometimes they were responsible, who will then now work with the executive to, um, the, to ensure that they, when they're planning, things are going well and can be of support for them. So in other words, the, the student executives of those clubs are not left alone if if things come up and they need somebody to turn to, they know, well, this is the faculty advisor liaison with us, working with us, so they can call on them and reach out to them. Yeah. OK. Um, so we will take a quick break now. Uh, Mr. Komi, we've been speaking for a little while. Mm -hmm. So we dealt with the clubs. Mm -hmm. And I know in as much as we haven't been able to get our sporting events back on track, mm -hmm. I would like for us to speak a little bit about that mm -hmm. and also um, the new unit within your de your department, or the new department within your unit, the health, just to tell us a little bit about that, and then we will get into the details of our Moa um, Heritage Quayol activity. Thank you for joining us at the here at the NTN for SALCC updates. We will be back shortly. The future is ever changing. Communities, jobs, and economies are continually being transformed. This is why. We need incredible minds to connect problems of innovative solutions, to disrupt and create new industries, to enable businesses to think sustainably, to shape evidence-based leaders and the next generation of visionaries. SALCC helps you to shape your career. Your passion is calling. Your future is standing by. Tap into your potential. Virtual and on-site classes, dedicated faculty, diverse student experiences, and highly recognized programs. So after Lewis Community College, apply today and fast track your career.
Thank you for staying with us. And if you're just joining us, welcome to SALCC Updates, um, giving you information, news on our events, our new activities at the South Lewis Community College. And today in studio with me is Mr. McCoville Comby, who is the coordinator of the Student Experience Unit. And he was just giving us all of this information about how we are keeping students engaged with co-curricular activities that we consider just as important as the academic activities. So we were just talking about the clubs a little bit um, ago. And Mr. Comby, I, I know you spoke about the clubs and sports fair. And um, in as much as sports has not returned to what it, it should be for our young people in St. Lucia, give us a sense of, of what what the sporting culture is at the South Lewis Community College? Well, the, the sports at Safa is, is similar to what we, many um, secondary school students would know. The students on arrival at the college are, are broken into houses, are separated into houses. Walcott after Derek Walcott, first war house after Hunter, first war. Thomas after Leeton, Thomas and first, which one are we? Lewis. Lewis after, after Lewis. And, and we take part, apart from internal sports um, competition among the houses, we take part in a number of the inter-secondary school um, activities. So we take part with, in cricket, in basketball, in all the various um, inter-secondary school sports. The last time they were the face-to-face -face sports, we were, we were on a rump, we were winning everything. So until COVID interrupted us, so as soon as that, um, we, over that, we will um, return to our winning ways. We are now, however, as a, again, as I said, how do we operate in this, um, in this COVID um, environment? So we are now looking at some of how to have the virtual activities. And um, we hope for November to have like a virtual um, relay and a number of different sports too, because they for students to see how this can this can be so we we will not necessarily have the big face to face activities but we will definitely be having one or two virtual activities in sports and for students to see that it is doable and it is just as enjoyable great so we have we have looked at the co curricular of of clubs at sports and students mm -hmm being able to um, get into their special interests, learn how to offer service, and therefore build their skills, their life skills. Two other units that you spoke to, I think, are, are very, very critical. One particularly in this, in this pandemic period mm. is that of your mental health. Mm. And I know the counseling unit has been doing some work um, in terms of virtual engagement as mm. well with students. Can you speak a bit to that? Yeah, well, the counseling unit, as I said, though now under S the student experience unit, has been an established unit. So they have had a, a program, and what they have been able to do very efficiently is move that program program which they have been running for some time onto the virtual sphere very, very effectively, I must say that. And so, for example, uh, two weeks ago, they had a, a college prep um, seminar for students where they had a, a, a facilitator from the United States who joined them, was online, and he spoke to the students about how they should be learning to prepare for um, um, for college and university because too often students it is when they in second year and they maybe even when they in their final year of, of second year they start thinking about universities or colleges and, and so he was really able to help them understand that no even at your very first semester at, at the college you have to start thinking about if I am to go to college what are the colleges that are available what are the colleges looking for because that is what is critical because again if students are doing that they will know as we said earlier co-curricular um, skill sets are something very big especially for the universities in the United States so the, the, the counseling unit has been able to continue, as I say, quite a bit of that. Recently, they, have, they had a, apart from college prep, they had an online, um, I think it's last week, where they prepared students for exam because we are midway um, during the um, semester and there are some students who are doing a modular format. So they would have had, they would need, they would be having an exam after seven weeks of class. So again, they did a preparation, how to prepare for exam, exams and stuff. So the counseling unit is very, as I say, has been established and they have moved everything online um, quite effectively. Mm -hmm. And even as I say, the counseling process, because 
that has not been so, that is not so difficult as some people because you know, um, you, many times a person calls you and they broken down and so you have to talk to them on the phone. So the, the doing it in a Zoom format was just a, uh, an extension of that process. The other unit, which is a completely new unit because we had to um, bring that person a call, is the health educator. Mm -hmm. And she is a qualified nurse, and her job now is to help speak to persons about health, sexual health, their bodies, and so forth. And so sometimes we, we just assume that as persons, young people grow up, it's natural, so they know about their body, they, it will be an easy thing because. We grew up learning about our body from other people telling us things, and, and it's many times when we much older we learned that what they told us was wrong or, or half truth or whatever. And so the health educator will be having same like online seminars, uh, discussion points with students for them to discuss their bodies, their bodies, their growth, their concerns about their bodies. We know in this um, image conscious um, age, persons can get carried away with that. So to speak about differences in body and in, 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 in growth and what is beauty and all those kinds of things. So as I said, the, the, the unit is trying to ensure that whether it's your mental health, whether it's your physical health, whether it's your just your knowledge about your body and your, your, your activities which will develop you body, mind, and spirit, we can meet those needs across the board. Great. And finally, the Madras here reflects the month that we're in. I know your unit has some big plans for Creole Heritage Month. Tell us what's in store for our students and the general public. Well, we wanted, again, sc school supposed to be fun. There must be an element of fun. And so what we did, um, we wanted to have students showcase their talent. In, in a fun in, in, a, in a fun environment, and so we decided to have this talent expose for the students. And in light of the fact that it was Creole Month, we said, well, listen, it will also be a useful thing instead of just having them do their talent, they do something in Creole because we know that a lot of the younger persons are losing that 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 experience of of, of Creole because. Maybe their parents don't speak to it, they speak enough of it. They, we, they don't go to the market, it's a supermarket, they go into shop. So we thought we could have done a number of things with that. So if they, they're showcasing their talents, so they had developed the skills of rehearsing, of preparation, of, of present, presentation and so forth. But at the same time now, they're doing it in a, in, in a format with a language and culture. So that means they have to learn a little more about the, the, the culture. Mm -hmm. They have to learn words which they didn't know. And so that way we would be killing um, about five birds with one stone. And so that talent expose is scheduled for the 28th of this month. And all now, right, we are now recording the students as they do their various. We expect to have um, a number of categories. We would have a music category where students would play a musical instrument um, out to a Creole song of their choice. We would have a cookout where students would cook a, a, on coal pots, uh, which is not the norm for none of them. We would have a, a, I think it is a singing a song contest where a number of persons would sing a number of songs in Creole. We would have a dance where we would show the dance. That part would be more demonstration of some of the of the local dance. And by that, we want to show the young people that you know really dancing, as it, it can be the foot and you don't have to always be holding up a wall. And um, we have a, the, we're going to have a little um, fashion show, for want of a better phrase, where, where the Creole, how people have utilized the madras and other Creole colors in making more casual clothes. Because one of the important things about ensuring the survival of your culture is adapting adapting the culture to the modern time. And so in the fashion, we will show how they have utilized those things. So we really invite you to look forward to the 20th. We have something solid for you. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Combi. Mr. Combi, McCovell Combi was my guest today on SALCC Updates, telling us about the function of his unit, the student experience. And like he said in his last words, the college will be putting on a talent expose for Moi Heritage Creole. 
Join us right here on NTN next Thursday. They will be broadcasting that show as well as Calabash TV. So we're going to bring you that live. Stay tuned to our social media pages where you can get updates on this and you will be seeing our advertisements. But we look forward to bringing you the talent of our students. Thank you so much for joining us. Continue to follow the protocols and to be safe. See you next week. Are you looking to broaden your career opportunities? Future-proof your career with a bachelor's degree from Nasa Arthur Lewis Community College. We've introduced new cutting-edge degree programs in Environmental Studies and Sustainability, Tourism and Hospitality, Business Administration and Public Health. Online platforms are making it easier than ever before to further your education and mask your competitive advantage. This is the game changer you've been waiting for. Get the highest return on your investment in UECS from the college you trust.